Your objective in this stage is to physically demonstrate the assessment of a medical patient, and you will be given a scenario. You're being evaluated individually on the skill, but you have an a, a part, imaginary partner who works under your direction. At the appropriate times, please describe to me those procedures that you would delegate to that partner. You also may assume you have any needed equipment. For each assessment section, I will read you a brief patient scenario, and during the assessment, I will answer any questions you would normally ask your patient. Remember, this is a practical exam, and you must physically perform the assessment. Do not assume that I can see what you were doing. Briefly tell me what you were doing as you do it. You have 15 minutes to complete each assessment. You'll be stopped at 15 minutes and evaluated on your performance to that point. Please let me know when you're ready to start. Ready, sir. You respond to a call um, for an elderly male complaining of shortness of breath. You find him sitting in a chair in his backyard. Okay. Seen safe to be assigned? Seen is safe. Okay, I have one patient. Need your illness, shortness of breath? All right. So at uh, this time, um, we'll start to do our assessment for the need for additional resources and activate ALS. Uh, I'm going to approach my patient. So my general impression, as I walk in, you say he's sitting in a chair in his backyard. How do I find the patient? Is he, is he tripoding? Any accessory muscle use? Your patient's sitting in the chair, using accessory muscles to breathe in a tripod position, um, and he looks a little anxious. Okay. So I'm going to approach my patient and introduce myself. Hi, sir. How are you doing? My name is Joe with ABC Ambulance. You okay if I try to help you out today? Yes. He tells you, can't breathe. Okay, so as I'm doing my airway assessment, do I notice any cyanosis or uh, any angioedema or swelling to the airway? There is no swelling to the airway, there is no angioedema, but you can hear some audible wheezes. Okay, so at this time, the airway, is, the patient's able to open it, it's patent, no need for sucking at this time, and the patient is securing their own airway. You said that I have some audible wheezing? Yes. So I'm going to move on to my, my breathing assessment. You said I have accessory muscle use. As I do a visual inspection of chest rise, what is the respiratory rate of my patient? Patient's got a respiratory rate of uh, 28, and it's a little shallow. 28 shallow, labor with accessory muscle use. So I'm going to listen to lung sounds. Sir, are you okay if I take a listen to your lungs? Mm. I'm gonna ask you to just sit forward in the chair for me so I can listen. So with my stethoscope, I'm going to listen to lung sounds, starting at the bases. Breath in, and out, in and out. Listening to my six fields. And what am I hearing? You hear inspiratory and expiratory wheezes in all fields. Inspiratory and expiratory wheezes, okay. At this time with the accessory muscle use and the audible wheezes, I'm going to direct my partner to place my patient on high flow oxygen at 15 liters. We're gonna deliver this oxygen therapy through a non-rebreather mask. Does my patient accept our intervention? He does. Okay, so with the oxygen in place, I'm going to check for circulation. So sir, I'm just gonna check a pulse. So I'm checking for a radial pulse. What is the pulse? He has a pulse, it's rapid and strong. Rapid and strong. And his skin vitals? As skin I'm is pale, cool, and a little diaphoretic. Okay, and no other uh, signs of any, any gross bleeds or anything like that. There's right. no trauma. So my patient's having trouble breathing. We've got him on oxygen therapy. He's got uh, all these signs of distress. So we're gonna say that this patient is a high priority patient. We're gonna minimize our scene time, and we're going to uh, start to get ready to uh, do our assessment on our patient and leave the scene. So sir, um, with this shortness of breath, he's saying that you're having trouble breathing. Um, when he's answering me, is he talking to me in full sentences or? He's speaking in one to two word sentences that are interrupted by some coughing. Okay. All right, so sir, when did this start? What were you doing when this came on? Started about an hour ago, and he tells you he was uh, cutting the lawn. Okay, so you're doing some physical activity outside and you felt this come on. All right, does anything make this better or worse? Uh, nothing seems to make it better, and uh, it's getting worse over time, okay. Progressively. Okay. Uh, on a scale of one to 10, one being no trouble breathing, 10 being the worst struggle you have in breathing, not being able to breathe at all. Where do you fall on that severity scale? Tells you it's about a six. About a six? Okay. And you said this is going on about, about an hour? About an hour. Okay. Um, other than the shortness of breath, do you have any other any other pain or discomfort? Any chest pain, headache, dizziness, anything like that? Um, he tells you he has some tingling, uh, some numbness in his chest, some, some pressure sensation but it's usually worse with breathing. Worse with breathing, okay. Um, and sir, are you allergic to anything? Uh, he's allergic to aspirin and morphine. Aspirin and morphine, okay, those are your only allergies. All right, and sir, uh, do you have any uh, past medical history? Do you have a history of uh, many medical conditions? Yes, a history of asthma. History of asthma, okay. And are you prescribed any medications that you take daily or, or on an as-needed basis? He has a handheld inhaler. So you have an inhaler. Have you used that inhaler today, sir? He has not. 
is not used as an inhaler. Is it uh, somewhere where we could retrieve that for you? Yep, he pulls it out of his pocket. Okay, so I'm going to have my partner start to get me a baseline set of vital signs, okay. um, and I'm going to uh, be able to inspect this inhaler for him. Um, you know, last night, take, sir. Uh, he had breakfast a couple hours ago. Okay, and you say you were doing some physical activity. Um, in the past, when you've had these asthma attacks, does this feel similar to those attacks? Uh, it actually feels worse. It feels worse than usual. Okay. So at this time, my partner should have been able to attain a baseline set of vitals. So what would vital signs include? I would be looking for, uh, we've gotten a radio pulse. Has there been any change in the radio pulse? Nope. Radio pulse is about 120 and strong. Okay. And a blood pressure? His blood pressure is 146 over 60. Okay, and respirations, have they eased at all with the oxygen therapy? Respiratory rate is still 28, still it's amazing. Okay, um, so at this time we're going to examine uh, the patient's inhaler. This is a medication that's a standing order for us to assist the patient with if they have not already taken it. I'm going to make sure that this inhaler is within expiration. It does belong to the patient. We're going to go over our five rights. Uh, I have the right patient. This is his inhaler. This is uh, the right medication. We want to give albuterol as a meter dose inhaler. Uh, the right dose is going to be as prescribed. Uh, sir, when your doctor prescribes this for you, how do you normally take this medication? Uh, two puffs every four hours. Okay, two puffs. So we have the, the dose that is prescribed by the physician. Uh, this is going to be an inhaled medication, so our route is inhaled. Um, and this is the right time because I, I believe that my patient is suffering from an asthma exacerbation. So they're having an asthma attack, and we're going to get inspiratory, expiratory wheezes, and accessory muscle use. We're going to assist the patient with their major dose inhale. Uh, so after we've examined the five rights, we've got our baseline set of vitals. Uh, what I want to do now is explain to the patient that I, I want to go down this course of treatment. So sir, I think what's happening is you're, you're having an asthma attack. It sounds like it's, it's worse than what you've experienced before. If you're okay with it, what I'd like to do is, is uh, assist you with your administration of your uterine inhaler. So you're going to take it the same way you've been prescribed by your doctor. Would you be okay with that course of treatment? Yes. Okay. So at this time, I would explain to the patient, when we do this, we'll remove the oxygen. I'm going to have you take a nice deep breath an exaggerated exhale, and then I want you to take in this inhalation, all right, so you'll put it up right in front of your mouth, take in an exhalation, and then try to hold your breath as long as possible. Are you okay to try that? Yes. All right, so after you've taken a nice deep breath, we would remove the non-breather mask, and I would have the patient uh, go ahead and perform that. Is he able to take in the inhalation? He does. Okay, and he's able to hold his breath? Yes. Okay. So I would put the auction back on, allow him to take a couple of deep breaths before we go with that second puff, and then I would have him repeat that process. Okay. Is he able to apply? Okay. Now that we've been able to administer that medication, I want to uh, start to package our patient. Okay. Um, once we have them packaged up, we want to start to get off scene. Uh, again, this is a high priority patient. I want to, uh, in the back of the ambulance, I would start to re-administer my patient. Uh, I want to make sure that I'm listening to lung sounds, so I'd have my patient sit forward. And I would start to listen to lung sounds again. Deep breath in for me. Listen over inspiration and expiration in each of my six fields. Has there been any change in the lung sounds for my patient? He has less wheezing. It's, there is still some wheezing, but there's, it's less, and your patient looks better. Less use of accessory muscles. Okay. So, sir, he's starting to feel a little bit better? Yes. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take you over to the hospital. We're going to keep you on the, on the oxygen, try to keep you comfortable, and, and get you checked out. You okay with that? Yes. Okay. So we would then transport our patient to the hospital. We would reassess our vital signs and our intervention every five minutes. When we get to the hospital, we would transfer care to an equal or higher health care provider. Thank you.